are live. We are live for the pre-show. Let me retweet the stream tweet. Pre-show. Pre-show. This has been part three tonight. Yeah. This is part three. There we go. Catch up on that. All right. Excellent. Let me double check Ooh. that my chat is that's the mouse for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never right. ever done that. Yeah. Ever. Oh goodness. That's there it. we go. Oh nice. It's working. Perfect. Mm. All right. That's excellent coffee. Is it? Yeah. I like it. We got uh chapter Three and four. Three and four. Of you said we. Bit. You said we'll get through three and four tonight. You think? I think so. I think okay. we can. I think we can. Yeah, I. I think the vast majority of what we're going to be talking about uh, is going to be discussion stuff. You okay. know, I think that it's it's going to be less. Hey, we need to cover exactly what the book says here, and more of. Hey, the book will lead us into these discussions. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. A couple minutes, thank you. Wait for yeah. people to show up. Let the pre-show build. About ten minutes. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I got the. I don't know what I'm gonna do after after we get done. Yeah. Yeah, I might want that kind of open. We got. Oh, that hey! I just got a notification. <laughs> that we're live. <laughs> Thanks, guess Twitch. What, guess what? We're live. Two seconds ago. I think you mean a minute and 53 seconds ago, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick on the draw there. Come I thought on. you might have uh, been wanting to become a dragon after this. Oh, I, uh, they, I like that. Shape uh, shift out. I like the, uh, I like the, what we, that, that, uh, I was going to say artifact, magic item. Yeah. I like you to do that. I did, I actually did, uh, I had a one shot this weekend, uh, run real quick. Kind of use that, but on a much smaller, smaller scale. Yeah. I'm just done a, mon uh, a monster run. Hey, Dark. Hey, Hello, where are we going? What's yeah. that? Heck yeah. Everybody here. Uh, yeah, it, I think that this book so far has been really cool. I'm excited to see, well, I was going to say I'm excited to see what comes next. I know what comes next. I've been able to look over the book already. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm excited for you to get to see. Right, and actually get to discuss it. <laughs> yeah, there's some good stuff coming. So. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I think, I think the books have been... They're, these books have been better than some of the ones in the in the past. Not, that the, mm -hmm. not the ones that are better. We're not like, you know, Tasha's uh, is bad or anything. Right. But, really, but I just, I just feel these ones are better. I don't even remember what Tasha's had in it. <sighs> We got if I uh, you can catch, don't catch me lying. I understand. <laughs> fair enough. The laughter, Tasha City's laughter. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Tasha's had fair enough, dark bugbears. Did it? Didn't it? You know, while we're still in the pre-show, I'm literally on D&D &D Beyond right now. I can pull up Tasha's. And see what it came with? Yeah. I think it had, it, was that one that th was like they tried to sprinkle a little bit of everything in? Or? It had, oh, it had Artificer. Yeah, okay. Uh, it had Circle of Spore, Circle of Stars for Druid. It had a bunch of subclasses. Uh, it had some new feats. It had some new spells, new magic items. And it had some more information about uh, session zeros and sidekicks oh, and stuff not, like that. Yeah. So sidekicks, yeah, because yeah. because the essentials uh, kit came out that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Though. I think I appreciate you checking it out. And yeah, out of the two, I prefer Girl Next Gondor. Um. The, uh, just the way she presents everything. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. That's cool. So talk. <sighs> Artificer, sidekicks. I think I think we might have tried to use sidekicks once. Yeah. Sidekicks are such a weird thing. Yeah. Hey, well. Hey, man. Yeah, sidekicks are, are just like... In theory, sidekicks and hirelings are super cool. Yeah. But then... Trying to get it to balance and work. Is, yeah. 
it, it begins to be a problem. Yeah. Especially because, like, nobody wants their sidekicks to die. Nobody wants their hirelings yeah. to die. But then they yeah. want to bring them with them. Right. And so it's like, well, now you have this level one fighter. <laughs> right. Y'all are level eight. He's not going to survive. You need to leave him with the cart. But you don't want to leave him with the cart. Well, that's a, that's a hard thing, right? Yeah. You can't... It's hard to give a group, like, um, <laughs> like a peer. Yeah. You know, for them to... Cause just giving them another character, basically. Right. It's a, it is a weird balance of sidekicks and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's why you give the party a child. One of the sidekicks in the century is a child. Yeah. A healer. And then... Your dog stays in the room. It's still a puppy. You murder that child. <laughs> That's a healer. And the party goes, no! But hey, they should have protected that kid. That's all I'm saying, you know? A chief only. only. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. Hey, all I know how to do is lead. I'm not, you know. Yeah. I did... yeah. I remember one of the big things. A chef. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> that makes that works too. Um, one of the things that I used to do with higher legs is I would hire, uh, like level one adventurers, and then whenever we this is like third edition, right? Okay. And <clears throat> whenever you get to a new dungeon, you would go. Okay, you guys, your job is to go first through all the halls and to test every door you're getting paid hazard pay if you die I will resurrect you oh that's nice of you but you're getting paid hazard pay go in and trigger those traps so we don't have to deal with them hey pay that and uh, hey and uh, it worked the DM was able to spring the traps on very weak NPCs that could yeah. die and it didn't hurt anything yeah and it cost money to bring them back, so it was a good tax, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then also, they got to carry the treasure, so we didn't have to worry about the treasure weight. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that was pretty good use. And Not you bad. knew they couldn't run off on you, or try to run off well, with the yeah. treasure, because you were 19 levels higher than you <laughs> Right. <laughs> they would kill you. Yeah. And kill you dead. 5e doesn't really have a use for that, you know? Well, no. No. It, 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 is it because... I don't know if it's because there's not enough depth really yeah. on on stats and stuff and which is a good thing on one hand and right hand not, but yeah it really doesn't balance out well but yeah I don't, I don't know they've worked in they've worked in other games and I've seen them work in other games better mm-hmm. the like I said we tried it once with the sidekicks and it, it wasn't bad but it just didn't it, it felt like a it was tacked onto the side of the game not yeah. a, not in a part of the game I get where you're coming from there dark but in third, at least, money was like nothing. In third edition, money was a thing that you could just oh, have yeah. so much of. Especially if you're rolling on uh, charts, mm-hmm. like random charts for random treasure, mm-hmm. you're gonna have you're you're gonna get uh, money quick. I had at one point, I think I had like four thousand diamonds as a wizard, as a level twenty wizard in third yeah. edition. You know, it's like I can literally buy anything I want. Yeah. So instead, I'm just gonna pay these guys to do my dirty work for me. Um, yeah, actually, you could almost you almost could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was literally easier to res them. Yeah. than uh, it was to walk in the room myself. They, uh, <laughs> but you have to kind of take if you if you're gonna roll, especially after fifth level in D uh, and D, and we'll, we'll stick five E for sure because I'm thinking of the jar. If you're gonna roll hmm. randomly, especially for the magic items and treasure, the the players are gonna load up. Yeah. Before it's well, down. and one big thing with third edition that I think people forget is third edition didn't cap out at twenty. Like hmm. you had twenty, and then you had an additional twenty levels of heroic campaign that you could. Yeah. Do. And so, like third edition, you just kept going, and as long as your Fair. character lived, you just had everything. Yeah. Yeah, second difference. Second edition is definitely a different yeah, animal, exactly. and that's different. that's what I played. I didn't play third. I played second. So mm-hmm. yeah, the idea of, of that many diamonds and the they you know the, the cap wasn't twenty in second edition either. Right. Um, it was brought up to twenty five around the time of Dark Sun, mm-hmm. and then eventually to thirty. Yeah, I think that's the high. It might have went higher than that, but I know I believe thirty was the highest that second edition finally went. I should specify too. Third edition was the closest to a video game. Yeah. Right. Uh, it was the it was my bread and butter three five being the the more balanced version. It's the reason there is a three five, right? It's because third was not balanced. Yeah. And uh, 
third edition in a lot of ways is the video game version of yeah, yeah you have all the money, the money you need, need. you yeah. have all the items you need well you've got you've got like in the rules like supernatural stuff you can do yeah uh, even if you're not a supernatural character right so well unless it? we forget third edition is where you can cast denser floating disc inside a person and cut them in half so you know uh, they haven't released that in, in uh, fifth edition right. yet. Uh, they did have a thing in second edition with uh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, a, a tribute, but it was a word like that. Right. Where you hit another thing. It was kind of like feats. You could instead of getting a level, you would get a feat right. type thing. After that, I don't that you could theoretically continue to level in five e, but it would be unsupported. It all yeah. be homebrew. Yeah. Five uh, e doesn't actually go beyond level twenty right now. Yeah. And I, I, I love a lot of, about 5e, but mm-hmm. level 20, like those last three, four levels, I don't know, man. It's just, yeah. not, it's, it's not solid. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm think a, a tabletop video game would, would be, there are some good facsimiles, but they lean into the tabletop side of it and not the video game side of it. Yeah. And I don't think those two, I don't think those two are meant to connect in the way that people want them to. You know, people want to play D&D like it's a video game. Or they want to play yeah. uh, a video game like it's D&D. You know, and those two yeah. things are just very different it, from each yeah. other. It is. The, the mechanics just... Mm-hmm. And again, that's why 3rd Edition had to have a 3.5. You right. know, it had to have a revision because 3rd Edition was so busted. Boons. Yes, thank you. Mm. Uh, yes. Boons is what it was. Boons you could get. So instead... Uh, there was an option run instead of getting uh, after level 20, or maybe yeah. it might have been after the level 25 rule, uh, that you would get a boon hmm. on some of it before, after your yeah. next level. Some of those were super busted, too. Yeah, well, she was talking about being able to go to inv- pretty much invincible build yeah. with it. And yeah, uh, even in 20, well, you got boons in, uh, actually, you have boons in 5th edition. Right. And they are, one of the optional rules is, hey, if they're 20th level and you don't have to level up any, can't level up, yeah. give them a boon. Yeah. You know, been a fire. There's, there's a list of 30, 35 maybe. Yeah. In the DM's guide. So it, it's kind of there, but not, not like not like before. Not right. Not like in 35. Yeah, definitely not like third. Uh, well, we're about 12 minutes in, man. Yeah, you we wanna... should probably kick off the actual topic here. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Full Spectrum D&D Podcast. My name is Trey. I am Rungren. And we've got Fizzbins to talk about. Yeah. Uh, we're on chapter three of Fizzman's Treasury of Dragons. Okay, yeah. Uh, chapter three is Dragons in Play. All right. And so I want to specify here at the top that we're probably not going to talk about this the same way that we have the other stuff here. We're not going to just read verbatim a lot of stuff. Instead, I think that this is going to give us more of a discussion about how we use dragons and what okay. we recommend with dragons. Because the vast majority of this chapter is on understanding dragons. Dragon's not in kinky play. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm starting to like you eat more and more. Uh, this is all capped <laughs> off by a quote from Fisman. Cool. That says, To portray a convincing human, one must embody greed, selfishness, and vigilance. To portray a convincing dragon, one must relax. Which I think is very true. Uh, this leads into our first actual discussion here, I think, which is how do you play a dragon? Dragons are very different than people. They, they react very differently with people. Yeah. How do you play a dragon as a DM for your players? Or if you get to play in a campaign where you all get to be dragons or like steel dragons. Yeah, yeah. How do you play something that is so different, so alien from the way a human being works or any other races that you play? Um, yeah. I have my thoughts on it, but I'm really curious how you portray dragons. Because I've got to play uh, in a couple of your campaigns where we have interacted with dragons. Right. Play a dragon worm once, nice. The uh, heck yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that was that went too long ago. The uh, well, the, okay, there's two. Generally, right at the beginning, mm. right off the bat, there's two ways that are going to define how I'm going to use a dragon or how I'm going to play it. Yeah. Um. One is, what is the untouchable dragon? Right. Right. This is the one that's so far. There's no the players don't stand a chance against it. Mm. You know. If one if somebody's dumb enough to attack it, the player's gonna die in one round. Yeah. Right. This dragon's untouchable. 
And usually on that aspect, it becomes more of the sage, yeah. right? Yeah. They're going to get, they're going to give out in a, uh, <laughs> not maybe. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Make the dragons younger for players playing them. hundred yeah. percent. Um, so that would be, that would be the sage kind of set back. You, you know, and that, that makes it easy for the, my ways are not your ways. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I see things when I understand, uh, the, the little more difficult one is the interaction one where you've got a group of players, you know, that can take this dragon on. Right. Uh, and then the interaction is going to be a, a lot more different. It's easy when you have that leverage of the, you know, I'm so much more powerful. Right, absolutely. That, but that when you're on a level playing, playing field, field, it's a lot different. And then, and then you know, you got your, what you think about what's your dragon's purpose. Yeah, you know, absolutely. The, it, you know, is it a, is it like your classic red dragon is going to be uh, selfish, right, and might let the players talk. For a little bit, just mm-hmm. to, it hadn't talked to anybody in a while, yeah. and then mid sentence decide to you know yeah. breath weapon the Eventually, whole party. Eventually, it's kind of small. Yeah, yeah, and then so it, it, it you're always going to play it, especially if you're playing the older dragons. It seems like aloof and above. Yeah, uh, on that, but uh, if, when you're playing with if you're for me if, if you're playing a dragon if you're if you're the DM and you have you're you're controlling dragon. It's much more difficult to keep the uh, when the players like, like I said when the players can go okay I think we can take it if we need to yeah because that puts a little bit different dynamic on it for me I always try to focus on what the dragon wants right what is like you mentioned it a little bit but like what is what is the dragon's goal uh, because dragons they live so long exactly right uh, there's a point made in here later on that hey don't take it badly if a dragon doesn't deem you necessary to speak to right it's probably lived through three civilizations why would you matter and i think obviously when we look at our big fantastic dragons in in books and tv shows and stuff we have a huge range of what they're looking for right you have smog who wants to own and control you have shimmer gloom who just wants to protect his territory you know, right? Uh, and each of these dragons reacts incredibly differently to the heroic characters, depending on what they want. Yeah, and I think that is a, a great selling point immediately for your dragon when you're a DM. Is what does my dragon want? Yeah. Why is my dragon here? And once I figure that out, I can figure out how my dragon's going to act. Mm-hmm. Uh, because with a with a person, our wants and our desires are tied into what we're trying to do. But a dragon will be so much more patient, and that want and desire could be thousands of years away you know discord counts as a dragon I mean I guess yeah make the dragon act like the party can't take them yes you yeah. you, you always play it as above and beyond yeah um it's just it's kind of weird and I and because obviously it's D&D we're talking about D&D stuff you kind of keep it under uh you know the the ideals of your classic dragon you get your, right. your, your, your like I said the red that mm-hmm. is chaotic evil as selfish as you can get then you've got the gold lawful good uh, benevolent, but right. yeah, but it's still going to have that higher, you know, right. why do you, why do you, you inset peons matter? Right. You know, going through. So yeah, you always, especially with an adult or ancient dragon, is always going to, definitely dark, it's always going to have that mm-hmm. uh, air of superiority. In so, the bluff. I wanted to throw in here, now that we've talked about the way that we run dragons. Yeah. Uh, they have a bunch of tables. Uh, the first one being a, a dragon appearance table. Okay. Of like, hey, how do you want your dragon to look? Uh, I just wanted to throw a couple of these out here. Uh, scales covered with painted handprints of minions and mires or children. Okay. Uh, extra horns or spines. Elemental energy matching their breath weapons seeping out from between the scales. Mm-hmm. Uh, crooked teeth, notably overweight or underweight. You have so many options for what you want your dragon to look like. And if you're trying to make a dragon and you have picked up this book and you're not sure exactly what dragon you want to get... Roll on some of these tables, you know? Yeah. Play around with it. See what yeah. you get. Because the second table is their mannerisms. Uh, one being it rotates its head from side to side while listening or speaking. One being that it fiddles with the tip of its own tail, you know? Well, there's... Okay, there's, there's something to that that goes beyond just dragons, obviously, right? Right. Because do you, the, if you're... For your NPCs as a DM, mm-hmm. especially if you want one to stick out and kind of remember, you give it a quirk. Yeah, absolutely. You know, saying something like, you know, first things first. Absolutely. Or or it has a... Yeah. You want to do that. So that, that's, a help, that's a helpful list, not only for dragons, but just uh, in general mm-hmm. for NPCs to kind of flesh out uh, maybe something that will make them a little more 
more memorable. For sure. Uh, they have a bond list here too, uh, with some of those being like, I won't rest yeah. until I receive an item stolen from my horde. A uh, nearby person intrigues me with fascinating questions and bizarre ideas. Uh, I collect information about the worlds and would love to visit more worlds, you know? There's so many different options for dragons that you don't have with everything else. Well, also, there's a lot of good stuff. It, dragons is one of the things that w- they need to be, you know, yeah. they better get right. But one of the things that they did really well with in the Monster's Manual. Yes. Uh, I will stand by, even though I didn't play it, I stand by the, the, my statement that the 3.5 Monster Manual is the better yeah. Monster Manual. I agree. But they do. They give a lot of that comes in with the different uh, different dragons, right? The different colors and what what they want. So between the two, between this book and the monsters manual, uh, yeah. Sorry. Dragons bizarre ideas. Have yep. a barred dragon party. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a flaws and secrets section here that I think is really cool. Okay. Uh, where you roll on this table, and one of them is like, hey, given the opportunity, I eat to excess and then fall into a long, deep sleep. Uh, I'm terrified of creatures from the outer planes, especially Modrons. Uh, the prospect of living for centuries more exhausts me. Or, my personal favorite, I'm convinced that a version of me on a different world in the material plane is hoping to destroy me and steal my horde. <laughs> yeah. uh, a Modred, uh, M-O-D-R-E-D, is from the plane it's it's not the plane of order but it's limbo the elemental plane of balance balance is it balance i think it's it's balance it's one with the great machine is yes uh it's it's one of the other ways you can actually destroy an artifact in Mm -hmm. uh but they're uh order perfectly ordered creatures perfectly balanced creatures yep from the plane of balance then they are bizarre looking yep and uh most of the time they're around you and you can't even see them yeah. But if you suddenly are able to see one, oh boy. <laughs> they will take notice. Yeah. And you will never be free again. Yeah. We don't like that. Um, the next weird, cool thing they have here is like a breakdown of how to name your dragons. Okay. It's so like you want to make a dragon, you don't know how to name it. Here's a table. You roll a d20 and you roll a d4 and you combine the ones that oh, are. Okay, there. that's cool. So you could wind up with like. Andra Mirali Wallen. You know? Okay. Or you could wind up with Skadnim Morn Inger. Or you get a piece of paper and go consonant vowel, consonant vowel. Yes. Consonant vowel, yep. consonant vowel. Yep. <laughs> that's how I wound up with Jinarok Kashnaresh Yarkul. <laughs> yeah, those are the things. If you if you do manage to kill a Modrin, another one will just appear. Yeah. Yeah, they they are balanced that way. Uh, they go into some more stuff about you know damage absorption, flybys, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. That's awesome. Uh, and then it goes into lifespan and a young a wormling, specifically, uh, and what a wormling might be looking for. A young dragon, what a young dragon might be looking yeah. for. An adult dragon, what an adult dragon might be looking for. And an ancient dragon, and what ancient dragons might be looking for. Right. And those, of course, are the most fun with, like, hey, I want to destroy one or more of the gods as an act of vengeance and ascend to godhood. Or, hey, I want to avoid decline by becoming undead or seeking magical alternatives to aging. Yeah. You know? Very, very big, cool stuff. Big, powerful, world changing stuff. Yeah. Like it. <laughs> Young dragon. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah. They also get into like, hey, maybe where did this dragon egg came from? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, hey, what happened here? And some of the cool answers are like spontaneous reincarnation. This dragon reincarnated. Yeah. Or uh, a draconic transformation. Something that wasn't a dragon became a dragon. You know. Now I changed I changed up the dragons for the one of the worlds uh, I run. Uh, they're super super rare. Yeah. But they're almost immortal. Yeah. Once they hit a certain point. Yeah, there are uh, there are Draco liches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they get into half dragons here too, uh, which is a very cool thing that you don't see very often. Uh, unfortunately, you do if you have a bard in your party. But... Uh, <laughs> look, if Dark gets to make the dragon bard joke, so do I. Have at thee. <laughs> Uh, And then they get into, like, what happens when a dragon dies, uh, what are the throws of the dragon, uh, one of which being it uses his breath weapon again, maybe rolled on the wild magic table, 
uh, the dr- that's cool. the body itself is pulled through a portal, you know? Yeah. Dragon of what? Well, that's actually really interesting because the colors, the child will take after either, depending on edition. I believe in fifth, it's the mother. But in 3.5, it was whichever was the more powerful of the two. Mm-hmm. The child would take after that color instead. Yeah. Red and blue makes purple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's there's just a lot in here about, hey, uh, maybe when the dragon dies, an enormous tremor shakes the earth within six miles of the lair. Well, you know? Yeah, well, not only that, you've got, uh, if you've got an ancient established dragon... Mm-hmm. <laughs> just so the lairs are far away, just saying. If you've got an ancient established dragon, right, and you yeah. take it out... Well, any if you if you know your dragons, even mm-hmm. the basic ones, if they've been there for a long time, the lands change because yep. because of them. That's right. And that's going to start deteriorating. Yeah. Uh, and there's a whole section in here for that. Uh, there's also hey, what happens to the dragon's power when it dies? Uh, have a good one, Will. The uh, its element overtakes his body in the immediate surroundings. That's a really cool way to do it too. Um, a big thing they get into here is how does the the power of the dragon pass to the party? Is it because they bathed in the blood or drank the or, or ate the flesh. Yeah. Is it because of investiture, which is how honestly most of us do it, which is just the hey, being around it when it died gave you XP basically, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, or is it an automatic transfer of as the dragon's dying, it recognizes that you were better than it. You were able to actually defeat it and it gives its power to you in yeah. that way. Um, See, that's the that's the uh, that's 5e is really alignment doesn't matter right but in things like that when you look at the alignment of the dragons you know that could yeah. help, that could help you uh, decide if that, how the dragon would go out right you know um, golly I don't, uh, because like the like the passing the power on uh, I can see a blue dragon doing that right I wouldn't see a green or a red. oh no and and it and does clarify just, in here that they can do that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. But, I, saying, I think I think the alignment would help me decide yeah. If I wasn't if I just rolling or doing it randomly. Yeah. No, if you're fighting an evil dragon, it's not going to pass its power to you. Right. But, to clarify... We'll see, so, we'll see, see that I, I don't know. Right. Well, it depends. Because right? lawful evil... Yeah. Yeah, it might. It might it have lost that, the challenge. And, that code of yeah. honor. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, lawful, evil ha, ha, lawful evil has a code of honor, so I, I think yeah. it would count. I think it could be there. To, to the question of you get dragon power from killing dragons, technically, you get power from killing anything in D&D. <laughs> Right, <laughs> but in the form of experience points. But most of the time, when you want to tie that into the world, you will use something like investiture, which is just yeah. you were near it when it died. You catch the breath of life as it leaves it; it enters you. You know. Um, also, that could you know, that's that's a story hook in in and of itself. It absolutely is to go to go to the next part. So mm-hmm. after that, we get into Draco Liches and some like, hey, how did how did this happen? Like a gym dragon from another world searching for a dragon's echo, which has become a Draco Lich. Uh, for sure. And that's yes. that's the that's the 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 easy way to do it, I yeah. would say. And that and that's there's nothing wrong with it. That's the ba- sure. that's basically what you're doing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Make it an experience from killing it. Yeah, going, hey, yeah, you killed it, you know, it's uh, you, have, you have gotten stronger. Now in second edition when Draco Lich is that the Draco Lich section, mm. they uh you know, it's presented as an almost impossibility, the amount of power it takes right. to get going. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so usually if you're dealing with that, you're dealing with something else that's super, super powerful as well. Yeah, because it was able to do it. Yeah. Uh, because they're getting into the Echo stuff here, which yeah. we talked about in the first episode, Yeah. Uh, one of the ways that a Draco Lich could happen in this book is that it has so many Echoes that mm. the body is continuing to fight on. Okay. Uh, which is an interesting way to do yeah. it. Ties, it. ties that back to the first chapter. Uh, That's good. And it also gives like a whole section here for the echoes themselves with a table of like, hey, maybe it's the same kind of dragon and the same age of dragon, but it looks different. Mm-hmm. Uh, an echo of that same dragon. Maybe they're the same age, but they're the different colors. Uh, maybe they're similar in <laughs> appearance, but different in, in other ways, you know, radically different maybe, but still bound by fate. Uh, which is very interesting. Yeah, uh, Dark, I think you might have missed that because that was kind of the, close to the beginning of uh, Chapter 1. Mm-hmm. We're going into it. They were talking about... Uh, basically, it's a multiverse Yeah. Uh, with dragons. And so their echo uh, in each multiverse will come back. The uh, Jet Li is the one. Yeah. They get into uh, Dragons of Song and Steel, 
Oh, sure. Shifting Dragons. Oh, sure. Uh, and it's all very, very cool. Yeah. Dragon organizations, including the Cult of the Dragon, the Chamber, the Hide Card Dragons, and the Inheritors of the First World, with adventure hooks for each and every one of them. Again, this is a book that if you're looking for adventure hooks and you're looking yeah. for stuff for dragons, it's the way to do it, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's also a section in here for followers, and the followers themselves being either dragons as the follower or followers that are following dragons, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you could build that up to be, like, you could actually, you could probably build that up like multi, like a multi-level, like you fight a group of, let's say, probably a group of six, yeah. right? At 10th level. You fight the first incarnation. Yeah. You won't be able to beat it again. Right. That way, at the uh, 15th level, you fight the... Yeah. The bigger room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> It'd be fine. Very cool. Uh, so, yeah, they get into here of like, hey, maybe a dragon wants to invest into a business and multiply the investment. Yeah. You know, maybe that's a task that a dragon would find interesting. And so its followers are like business owners. Maybe dragons want companions. Uh Particularly well, I, some of whom they fall in love with. It happens, you know? Yeah. It um, has happened to them. Right? Yeah. Uh, maybe they're a crime boss. Dragon can be a crime boss. Why uh, not? I, I've never done that in uh, D&D, but I have done it in Shadowrun a few times. Maybe they want to say it. Sandwich. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they just want a sandwich. <laughs> so they keep a chef. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe a dragon is an emperor, and he's been pretending to be a human. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every time he changes his hair up a little bit, so that he can pretend again. Uh, maybe the dragon is a god. Maybe the dragon is a noble. A parental figure. A patron. A teacher. A warlord. Uh, and then they have a table here you can roll on for all the different relationships you could get from mm -hmm. those. Yeah. Uh, which is very cool. Yeah. Well, I, I, and I think... Was it Bahamut that would appear as a hermit? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's about this point in the book where we get the big reveal. Fizben is Bahamut himself. Oh, Okay. Having taken this form to be able to okay. write a book about dragons. Actually, I think I should have known that. I think I should have too, but it was it was when reading this that made me go, Oh, Dragon the Party Fights with Echo should be nice. Nigh on impossible to defeat. Yeah. And every Echo be creating plants to defeat the players, adding traps. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Cause it, yeah, you're right, because it would know. When that, when that group of six beat it before, it would know exactly, you know. Oh, I see what y'all did. This next section is incredible to me. Okay. Because it is, hey, you want to run an encounter with some dragons, right? Well, here's a whole bunch of ideas. But also, what if there were complications? What if what if the dragon doesn't want to fight you is the first one. The dragon has no interest in fighting you and will avoid all conflict until angered through significant insult or injury. Or the dragon is too bored to fight and will offer people treasure until they leave. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I, just, I love the idea of, like, you come to fight this dragon because you've been paid to do it, right? Go away. And the dragon just has no desire to fight at all. The dragon has a rival who notices the characters approaching the lair, keeps tabs on the fight. The rival might step in, yeah. going, hey, you can't fight that dragon. That's my dragon. Yeah. You know, just, oh, there's so much fun to be had here. Well, it depends now, on the dragon, right? No, when, when you get up the horde, they're like, ugh. You know, you would have to. You, it would have to be like it would be a bargaining thing. Yeah. Right, like take, there's, take, 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 take that pence. chest. Yeah. Take uh, take that crown over there. I don't. Well, need you don't it. touch anything. I'm sleeping on this yeah. huge thousand foot dragon, just covering all this treasure. Yeah. There's also a go. really good one here, which is uh, the dragon has a plan to feign death in case of an attack, <laughs> and collapses the cave on top of itself. Nice. Or tumbles into a deep chasm or some <laughs> similarly dramatic exit. And then after it's gone, it just waits for people to leave and then climbs back up. I don't mean to, and I know it's kind of an inside thing, but I, that's something I picture Landy doing. Yeah, for ah! sure. For sure. I have fallen into the crack of doom. For sure. I do want to throw this one in here, though, because this is a more serious complication. The dragon enjoys combat, and in each round of combat with the dragon, the characters catch an eerie glimpse of another world where one of the dragon's echoes is fighting something. Oh, yeah. That's really fun. Yeah. Really fun. Uh, and then, of course, there's another one here that's like, hey, the dragon is a true enjoying a true challenge and will call out, a good strike, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, there's there's a lot of fun in here. I've done that uh, before with the uh, challenge. Usually, usually so that's something like a, like a gold dragon. Yeah. I'll do, because, the, yeah. 
There's also, like, dragon as a schemer stuff here, where, like, the dragon will directly target a specific character or threaten mm-hmm. a character's bond or yeah. trap a character between its minions, you yeah, know? that's a green dragon, white dragon. Yeah. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play those. those are nice. There's a lot of fun that could be had here. And then there's a whole thing of, like, dragon campaigns. You yeah. know, what's what is you're working for a dragon or there's been a cataclysmic disaster because of a dragon or uh, there's been an extinction event or some new organization has come up and how do you tie dragons into all that if you want dragons? Because we want dragons. Yeah. It's Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons, you yeah. know? Yeah, I. That's it is. So, it's, it's, there's a lot of work done in Chapter 3 to, to sell you on dragons themselves being more than just the, hey, I sit on a horde. You know? Yeah. Or hey, just a big body thing at the end. Yeah. Look at that that leads us into chapter four, which I think we're going to have time to go ahead and cover tonight. Okay. Because uh, it's pretty short. All right. Which is about the hordes themselves. Okay, so uh, this is more of an expansion on uh, uh, what you would find in the DM's guide. Mm-hmm. That could, would really be handling, handy in the Monster's Manual, at least yes. for the dragon section. Absolutely. But, yes. Uh, so the first big thing to touch on here are layers, right? Yeah. Uh, what is a layer? Where is a layer? And they give you a table roll on and I kind of want to read all ten of these uh, but obviously you can make a lot more on your own as well layers are so much fun to come up with Okay. Um, number one is the area is a climate anomaly a cool and lush oasis in a hot desert yeah. a balmy spring within a frozen tundra a drifting iceberg in a warm sea a barren waste in the midst of a verdant forest or the like uh, number two is it's a wild magic zone Whenever a creature casts a spell at first level or higher or activates a magic item, roll a d10 on a 1, roll on the wild magic table. Yeah. Uh, number 3 is natural rock formations aligned with celestial phenomena at particular times of the year. Stars and planets might line up with rock spires and windows on solstices and equinoxes. Uh, number 4 is a dead god or titan is buried in the area. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Number 5 is the area is a vast crater, at the center of which is a long buried meteorite. Number six is a magical portal to another plane of existence releases dangerous energy and sometimes creatures into the area. Number seven is the area was a battlefield in an ancient war where thousands of soldiers were annihilated in a devastating magical assault. Number eight is gravity does not function as expected in the area, which might manifest as giant floating earth moats or similar terrain. Number nine is an enormous tree, possibly the oldest living organism in the world, grows at the heart of the area. And number 10 is a god left a profound impression on the site during an ancient visit to the material plane, perhaps a footprint, a pool of tears, or a splash of blood that has permanently infused the ground. Those are all pretty cool. Yeah, I like all those. Uh, all, all nice starting points, or at least uh, idea starters for building out from your dragon. Tree. Yeah. I like all those. And then, of course, they go into how dragons change the area around their lair, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, how each one of them will, will drastically affect it, you know? Yeah. And how you can have exposing terrain, smooth roads, uh, special hazards tied to the dragon itself. Maybe it'll have pleasant weather or unending rain. So this uh, it does. This sounds like an expansion uh, mm-hmm. and an addition to what, to the Monster Manual. Yep. Because you had that section on dragons beforehand and yep. then you have like Green Dragon, for example, right? You yes. You get Green Dragon then you get a stat block for different ages. Right. And so you get a whole page of information on there. So I'm liking this because this this feels hand in hand with uh, something they've already put out. Yeah, I agree. You know? I feel like it's it's the right next step. Yeah. Uh, I did want to call out here one of the cool things that they added on here was beguiling water as an option, which is whenever a creature drinks from a stream or lake within a mile of the dragon's lair, a creature must make a wisdom saving throw against a DC equal to 8 plus the dragon's proficiency bonus plus the dragon's charisma modifier on a failed save, the creature's charmed by the dragon for 24 hours. So on a successful save, they're immune for 24 hours. Kind of like the stream in Markwood. Yeah. What's that? that? There's a, there's a lot of really cool stuff in here, yeah. uh, including changes to monsters, a pervasive influence where any people dwelling within 12 miles of the lair develop personality traits inspired by the dragon without even meaning to. Okay, that's good. Some planar connections. Uh, where if it's like a, a red dragon, maybe there's a portal to the elemental plane of fire opens up, uh, because obviously the dragon has is very, you know, fiery, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so the the plane itself is reaching across. Uh, fissures, archways, or tunnels uh, could contain magic portals. 
yeah. uh, or windows to other worlds. Uh, the region has been changed magically because of the dragon's magic, which includes that gym dragons could use clairvoyance in that area. Brass dragons are aware of creatures that come near water in their territory. Green dragons can't be tracked near their lairs. Gold dragons can appear in the dreams of creatures that sleep near their lairs. All that fun stuff. Uh, there's also a death warning. Okay. Dragon is instantly aware of the death of any creature within a mile of its lair. Mm-hmm. Uh, menacing dreams. It, If the dra- name... Naming calls. If yeah. the dragon is named within a mile of its lair, it instantly knows and hears everything said within 10 feet of that spot for five minutes. Uh, just a lot of fun stuff, right? Yeah. Um, I, I love uh, I love the the naming. There's powering naming. Yep. There's a power in the true name. Yep. Naming I love calls. that kind of stuff, yeah. Uh, there's also some cosmetic changes that I think are pretty interesting. Okay. Um, deceptive reflections. At first glance, uh, still water within six miles of the lair shows a reflection of the dragon flying overhead. Because that's the kind of thing that, like, you, yeah, you never good. know, right? Or yeah. am I around there because, like, am I seeing it because it's actually there or because I was looking for it, you know? It does sound. And, yeah. and, and I would honestly say for an ancient dragon that's been propped up in a place for, for a while. Yeah, do them all. That, yeah, do them all. Yeah. Face in the clouds. You look up at the clouds and you think that you see the dragon watching you. Yeah. Uh, or starry scenes at night. The stars above the dragon's lair are surrounded by faint outlines of creatures that begin to move and act out scenes from the dragon's dream, including the dragons. Which is really interesting to me. Uh, then, of course, they have the lair actions. Yeah. Uh, now, these are already on your sheet anyway, but there are some new additions here. Okay. Um, lair rejuvenation. The dragon regains hit points equal to the number of hit dice it has when drawing a magical energy spice against lair. That's good, because that that's something that that ne- kind of needs to be in, that needs to be in there for dragons mm-hmm. uh, in their lair. I, I like that addition a lot. Also, catch breath. On a six, you automatically recharge your breath weapon. You can just roll a d six for free with that. Mm. So it's just a free recharge okay. or a free attempt to recharge. Okay. At the to top spend. of the round. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, lingering breath. Any creature that took damage from the dragon's breath weapon or the dragon's previous turn immediately takes three d six damage of that type. As okay. the breath weapon's energy lingers and clings to the target. Wait a minute, did I get that right? It's not top of the round, it goes on 20, right? And it's just score 20 is when you do a And it's just score 20, yes. It's when you do a lair action, yes. okay. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, although that changes based on the age of the dragon. Yeah. If the dragon is old and has been it. in the lair for longer, then it gets it sooner. Because it has more. Okay. So it lets you do more of them. Okay. But uh, Finally, toughened scales. Glowing magical energy swirls across the dragon scales, getting the dragon's resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing uh, damage until initiative count 20 on the next round. Water thing, you can further that. Animals drink it. Plants mm-hmm. drink it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. For sure. We would take it on. I think that would also... For sure. I think I would tie it in, kind of like what you were saying, Tiny, with the people mm-hmm. who, have, who are kind of... The water is what's causing... The dragon and the water that the yeah. dragon's causing that, those effects to kind of make them loyal. Absolutely. It's a good setup. A lot of good ideas that you can go, a lot of ways you can go with it and Absolutely. tie things together. Absolutely. So now we get into the hordes themselves. Okay. Uh, what it's all about. Yeah. And it gets into like how big the horde should be per type of dragon. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, they give the numbers in here. I think that realistically that's up to DM, right? Yeah. Uh, because maybe I don't want my players to be able to get 20,000 or 200,000 gold. Yeah. Just by sneaking up on an ancient dragon's lair yeah. when he's out, yeah, you know, maybe they're maybe that dragon's gonna have less money if if he's out and they don't right. have to fight him. Uh, but you know, the younger dragons keep their hordes in in further back, and the bigger dragons are not afraid to have their hordes closer to people. Hmm. Um, maybe a dragon divides their horde. Maybe they don't. You know, uh, and if they do divide their horde, then how, what do they do specifically with it to make sure people know it's theirs? They have a table here for that of like the broken pieces of an individual artifact, and there's yeah. one in each of its its hordes, a set of very oh, large gemstones. You know, ah. rod of seven parts. Yeah, that's the one it uses here. Is it really? Yeah, <laughs> such as the rod of seven parts. <laughs> All right, again, the lava or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a set of teeth from a rival dragon, a prophet, or a rare creature. You know, just yeah. just ways to let sure make sure people know when they show up that oh, this belongs also to that dragon. Uh, and then it gets into like plundering a horde and specific horde quirks, as in an item from the horde pollutes or purifies any water it touches. 
Uh, an item for the horde attracts weather appropriate to the dragon's kind. Tiny animals are irresistibly attracted to an item from the horde and constantly try to take it. Mm. You know, creatures sleeping near the treasure dream of the dragon. Characters wielding items from the horde develop personality traits evocative of the dragon's traits. Sentient items from the horde want to return to the dragon's lair and cause characters to accidentally stray in that direction. If coins from the horde are placed in soil, they encourage lush plant growth. Or my personal favorite, haunted hordes. Mm-hmm. Where we get a table. Yeah. Uh, if an item has been in a dragon's horde for a long time, and people have died around it, it's possible that item has become haunted. Yeah. And uh, they give a little table here with unfinished business for the haunted item, uh, which is uh, number one, entrust the goal that it gives you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, entrust the haunted item to the ghost heir. Entomb the haunted item with the ghost corpse. Destroy the haunted item. Use the haunted item for a specific purpose. Reunite the haunted item with other items forming a set. Or destroy the ghost killer, a dragon who is an echo of the horde's owner on another world. I had, uh, we had a couple, I ran a, uh, Got to high school, ended up with a, uh, a cursed, a haunted dragon horde. But it was yeah. The, the dragon. It was. It was uh, basically an airborne, lonely mountain type thing. Yeah. The horde was there. The dragon killed everything that had taken it. So it was haunted right. by the people that were left there. Yeah. Uh, wish I had that. There was a couple of good ideas in there that. Were, yeah. When I think back to that class, I was like, I could have taken that a little bit further. There's also uh, cursed items here. Oh yeah. Where the dragon, when it's dying, curses the horde, uh, which is very cool. I want to read this table too. Uh, each affected creature gains one level of exhaustion that can't be removed until the curse is broken. That's rough. Uh, each affected creature automatically fails saving throws against dragons, breath weapons, and frightful presence. Each affected creature gains vulnerability to the damage type of the breath weapon of the dragon who cursed the horde. Each affected creature's speed is reduced by 10 feet. Affected creatures can't spend hit dice to regain hit points during a short rest. When an affected creature dies, its soul becomes imprisoned by the slain dragon's spirit Preventing the creature from being raised from the dead. <laughs> Make a magical item, but it's haunted with something that wants you to destroy the item and won't let you release it until you destroy the item that would be amusing. Yeah. There's a... Uh, instead, I wouldn't do a uh, do that as a curse. Yeah. There's an alternate rule uh, for uh, trickery. Because technically you're not harming the player. Yeah. So you don't so you don't offer them the saving throw. It just automatically goes off. So yeah. Like that, that... Like this mug... You know, would automatically just stay stuck with it until they could, you know, smash it against something. Yeah, for like sure. It. There's also stuff here of like, hey, maybe there are groups that want the dragon's horde. Why do they want them? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, well, they want to use the the dragon's horde's magic yeah. uh, to be able to destroy a large magical ward, or to reassert the dominance of the material plane in a region, to repair the fabric of magic in a, a dead magic zone. You know. Yeah. Magic items near destructible. It depends on the item, but yeah, for the most part, magic items are very hard to break. Yeah. And then, I don't know if Pathfinder has it, but there's a second category of magic items, a higher category, mm-hmm. called artifacts. Yep. And there's there's you only cannot, certain yeah. Wor- ways yeah. uh, you can break them. You'd have to burn a wish for some of those. So <laughs> I mean, you have to burn a wish for so I mean, We talk about the Modred there, you have to go to their plane and put it in the Great Machine yeah. and have it crushed between the gears of that. That's yeah. the only way. Uh, okay, cool. Pathfinder has those too. Nice. Yeah. There's also the kinds of treasure here. They get into coins, mm-hmm. uh, mundane items, uh, and I think mundane items are a thing that people forget about how fun they can be. Um. Yeah, they do because and and uh, now I think about it, it's one thing I've kind of dropped off on the, on this because for a while uh, I would always make sure to describe a few pieces of artwork. Yeah. In there, something a little different. Well, also like. Yeah, I know. A kind. Of, so, some some of the yeah. way they set, set up the books like that doesn't quite yeah. make sense. I agree. I like the idea of the the mundane magic item. Yeah. Of like, hey, here's a here's a candle that you can turn off and on like a flashlight. Yeah. That's all it does. It's it's not gonna change everything, but you just have a candle you can turn mm-hmm. on and off when you want yeah. to. You know. Uh, gems and art and magic items themselves and you know how many should each person have for each type of dragon. And they go into the whole, like, breakdown here for the Horde. Here's a pen that lets you write in any language. Yeah, absolutely. I want one of those. Got so cool. I want one of those. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, they just they give you all the stuff here. And then they let you have uh, mundane items with a D100. And That's cool. I don't know if you want me to go through all these. No, I'm not going to go through all of them. Because mundane items are, are I, I think you hit the most important 
a fact. Don't for, don't forget about them. Yeah. So, you know, they're usually a, 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 a unique magic item does something quirky. But that be lined. <laughs> that could be, you know. Yeah. The, the ever laundered shirt, the, you know, things like that. Hmm. And those, yeah, what, what, while the chart, uh, well, I'm sure they got some great ones on the chart. You know, you can call yeah. it a couple if you like. The, uh, uh, there's a lot you can come up with on your own. As well. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to call out the large noisy wind chime. Mm. The uh, hourglass filled with sparkling sand. Yeah. A set of seven candlesticks bearing a god's holy symbol. And a funerary urn containing remains the dragon can't identify. <laughs> uh, and then the last one that I, I thought was really funny was... Hundreds of thousands of fake coins interspread within the real treasure. <laughs> oh, that's oh. <laughs> be, oh. So you know, yeah, they uh, they put a lot of work into this section, you know. So that was I kind of that was that was that was three and four. Yep, that's chapter that's three very, and four. That was an interesting little section to, to kind of set in the middle after after what we've gone through on it, right? Mm-hmm. To kind of set up the callbacks, stuff you can use if you had. Obviously, I don't think you'd have to have the monster manual by help. Right. But stuff you can use with the Monster Manual if you got that picked up. For sure. I don't know. I like I like the fact that they've... I think I like... I like the fact that Chapter 3 is there. I agree. With the, with useful tables and stuff. Yeah. To help you get over any kind of stump, hump, or anything. Mm-hmm. So next week, we have Chapters 5 and 6 left. They're the last ones. Okay. I think I said sick, not yeah, 6. You did. It's fine. Um, chapter 5 is the Draconomicon. Okay. And chapter six is the bestiary. Oh, that'll be cool. We'll be wrapping up Fizzbins. Uh We got some fun stuff to talk about in there. I'm, I'm excited. Okay. And, and, you, and you think both of those will cover? I think so. I okay. think because the Draconomicon itself is really big, but I think that we've already talked about the individual dragon types. Okay. So I don't think we need to cover that in there. I think we just cover new stat blocks and stuff like that. Okay. And then uh, the bestiary itself. It's not huge. I think there is... I should probably actually count instead of just pretending to count. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 24. Oh. 34 new monsters in the bestiary. So, and that'll probably be the, the bulk of the episode. Okay. But That's cool. I love that. Good book, man. Yeah. Back. Then we'll get back to talking some stuff. Yeah. Most of that. So, I still, I like a lot of the stuff. Uh, I like I like this book. I do too. I like this offering. I still think so far, uh, my big, my favorite thing about it is the Drake Warden. Ranger. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this is very good. The way the Ascendant Drake Monk is, or Ascendant Dragon Monk is really good too. Yeah. I, I'm just excited because it's, it's I, it's the first Ranger class where yeah. I haven't had to think for a couple of minutes for go, okay, okay, yeah, that's useful. Right. You know? No, I agree. It's like off the bat. It's like, okay, that's a valued member of the party. <laughs> Nothing involving bards in this so far. Oh, uh, yeah. True. That's true. They haven't yeah. even used the word bard. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they've been listening to me. I mean, they did bring up half dragons earlier, but. Yeah. Isn't that a different podcast that needs to be on? Oh, if we ever get to the point where we're doing that podcast, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble with a capital B. Oh, oh man. The, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think what's really going <laughs> to... That's right, with a capital B. I think what's really going to be fun for next week is getting into the... Uh... There are some really cool new monsters. Yeah. Yeah. I bet there is, and I'm, I'm I'm hoping there's some old ones that haven't showed up. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of that pop up in there. From from what I've read, half dragons always look elven with a bar with a dwarf. Okay. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the problems with half dragons is that uh, not <coughs> necessarily consistent. Yeah. <coughs> well, they try to do. You got half dragons, draconians. Yeah. And uh, dragonborn. 
Yeah. And Look, all kind of, yeah. Can I tell you how much I wish Dragonborn were named something else? Yeah. Because well, they're cool. I love Dragonborn. Well, the only difference but, between a Dragonborn and a Draconian, really, is that a Draconian does something vile at the end of its life. Yeah. It either explodes or shoots acid everywhere or something. Yeah. No, it for sure would. It's, it's just... Also, like, I think one of my favorite things about half-dragons, though, is that you don't even know sometimes that that person was a yeah. dragon. Yeah. And then suddenly your baby comes out looking like that. You're like, what? We need to find out. Yeah, this baby's going to outlive you by, like, seven generations. <laughs> we need to have a dog. <laughs> Oh man! No, I do. I do love the idea of like a dragon wanted to be a person for a day, and and I think there is a really fun campaign to be played there. Yeah. Of hey, your party are a bunch of dragons pretending to be people. You're not allowed to use your full dragon power. Yeah. If you die, you're gonna reincarnate. Well, see, that's what. See, that's what I like about uh, having the players be steel. I would like to do yeah. a steel dragon campaign. Yeah. All that because that's you know. While you're the adventurer, mm -hmm. you have no access to your... Right. It's not until you finish that adventure and decide to retire... Yeah. ...that you go back and you become the Steel Dragon and have your full uh, uh, full power back. <laughs> what? Your person for a day. Had a baby. If they would... Yeah. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, I'm yeah. okay. I'm good. That one just really got me. That right? one really got me. Saying like, saying like a. Oh, that was a good one, Dark. Tiamat on Jerry Springer. That's right. <laughs> Bahamut, what? you are not the father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, man! I don't think we're gonna top that joke. I think we need to stop <laughs> here. That. <laughs> it might be good. My elf had a baby with a dragon. So. so... <laughs> Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That is true. Yes. Yeah. Dragon. We're uh we got some more dragon stuff to talk about next week. And then after that maybe we'll talk about dungeons again for a little while so don't feel left out. <laughs> right. But uh, back in there. <laughs> how you My, doing on coffee? Um I'm actually about I've got hold on. That was two dragons mate in human form. Do they have a proper dragon? I think they still have a dragon. They baby. still have a, uh, they yeah. still have a dragon. Well, that'd be a surprise, wouldn't it? I thought you were human. I thought you were human too. Oh my gosh. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. That that is all the coffee. <laughs> all right. That was good. Well, until next time, I've been Trey. I've been Rungren. and we've been the Full Spectrum D and D podcast. Remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum that D and D has to offer. <laughs>